So let's prove the Sandwich Theorem for numerical sequences. And the name Sandwich is quite intuitive because it talks about the situation whenever we have three sequences, A and B and C and such that starting from some index, right? For every n greater than n zero, we have this inequality that is holding between those, those sequences. That is, uh, Bn is sort of squeezed or between n and, and Cn. And so if in addition we assume that the sequence An is convergent and Cn is convergent and they converge to the same limit L, then Bn is squeezed between them and is forced to converge to the same limit L. Uh, th that's, that's the essence, but this theorem uh, seems intuitively clear. It's quite handy in uh, lots of limit applications. So let's let's prove it. The proof is the proof is very nice uh, And yeah again, so well, and we'll see it later just some short visualization of the process So being is just like in the in the middle of the sandwich is getting squeezed if those are Approaching L then being has to approach L, right? Um, okay, so Let's start the proof. So uh, first we use the definition of, uh, of limit. And so if the sequence an approaches the limit L, then there exists uh, initial number n1 such that for every n that is greater than n1, we have that a n is greater than L minus epsilon. In fact, I could say uh, just equivalently by the definition that we also have that a n is smaller than L plus epsilon or that a n minus L in the absolute value is smaller than epsilon. Right, but I only need this part, okay? And so how would I proceed? Well, now if I were to assume that n is also greater than n zero, right? And I could say, but by the assumption of the theorem that, that this inequality holds indeed, right? So the idea is to choose uh, n to be greater than the maximum of those two numbers, right? Because then all the conditions are satisfied. Satisfied. So if n is uh, greater than the maximum, then in particular n is greater than n1, and then we have this side of the inequality. And since n is greater than n0, it uh, promises us that this condition holds. So all the conditions hold simultaneously. So for every, whenever n is greater than the maximum of the, of the two numbers, then this holds, right? And then I need to use the definition of the limit for the sequence Cn. So now since Cn approaches the limit L, there exists an initial number n2, such that for every n that is greater than n2 holds, but here I only take the right part of the inequality that cn is smaller than l plus epsilon, because um, I could also say that I know that cn is greater than, than l minus epsilon. So now what I need to do is to choose this n of epsilon that would work for the sequence bn. And so the choice now uh, would be to choose n of epsilon for the sequence bn to be the maximum of the three numbers. It has to be the greatest, uh, the, 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 the maximal of the three of n0, uh, n1, and n2. And then whenever we take n that is greater than n of epsilon, what we have is that um, this holds. Well, since, and just let's elaborate, since n is greater than n of epsilon, and n of epsilon is greater or equal to any of those numbers, then n is in particular greater than n1 of epsilon. And since n is greater than n1 of epsilon, then by the definition of limit for the sequence we a n, we have this inequality. Since n is greater than n of epsilon, which is greater than n0, then by the assumption in the theorem, uh, we have that this inequality holds. So because for every n greater than n0, bn is greater or equal to an and smaller or equal to cn. And since uh, n of epsilon is also greater than n2, then for every n greater than n2, uh, we have that Cn must be smaller than L plus epsilon. And then if we look at the first part of the inequality, L minus epsilon here, we see that Bn is greater than that and smaller than L plus epsilon, which implies by the definition of the limit that for every epsilon uh, greater than zero, we have found N of epsilon, such that for every N greater than N of epsilon, Bn minus L in the absolute value is smaller than epsilon, which implies that Bn converges to L. And now let's... Um, Let's apply this uh, theorem to compute this limit. Uh, now, we have already proved the limit arithmetic theorem, but we cannot apply it in this case. Why? Because every element here in this sum tends to zero, right? As n goes to infinity. That's not a question. But the thing is that the limit arithmetic theorem only works for finite sums. And here, what's happening is that when n increases to infinity, 
the number of elements in the sum goes to infinity. So we cannot apply the limit arithmetic theorem in this case, right? Because it, it's true that every element here tends to zero, but then the number of those elements tends to infinity, right? Uh, so for this, we'll use this inequality, which would be handy, handy because we haven't proved yet that we can uh, interchange the limit and the square root. We can do it because the square root is a continuous function, but this will be in the second part of the course, in the next part. Uh, so for now, let's just use this inequality. Well, why this inequality is true for every positive h? Well, indeed, this inequality, uh, we can just raise everything to the second power here. And then raising, squaring this, we have this, and squaring this, we have this. And since h is greater than zero, uh, then we have no problems at all here. It's, of course, we can square, square it. And then, uh, right, we have this one over here, and then 2h for positive h is greater than h, uh, h and then we have this positive addition over here, and then a positive element. So this inequality is obvious, and but this inequality is equivalent to this inequality. So we're going to use it. So now note when we look at the sum, right, uh, what would be the maximal element in the sum, right? The smaller the denominator here, the bigger is the summand, right? So the smallest possible denominator here is k equals one, right? And the smaller the denominator, the greater the sum and the element here, right? So the biggest element in the sum is just one over um, n squared plus one square root of that. And so clearly this sum would be smaller than n times the maximal element in the sum. And similarly, this sum would be bigger than n times the minimal element in the sum, which one would be the minimal? The minimal would be with the maximal denominator. So the maximal denominator is when k equals n. So this is this actually the smallest element in the sum. And therefore, the sum is greater than n times the smallest element, right? Well, we're almost done. So now if we're uh, to consider this inequality that we have constructed, we can divide here by n. And so we see that the sum is bounded above by this expression and from below by this expression. And so now what we have is that, okay, let's apply the sandwich theorem once, actually for the first time, but for, for this expression, right? So the square root of that by the inequality that we have proved, it's clearly bigger than one and then smaller than this. And similarly for this square root uh, by the same considerations between one and, and this expression, and now we can apply the limit arithmetic theorem, which we have already proved, to infer that this sequence converges to one and this sequence converges to one, right? And now by the sandwich theorem that we have proved, this expression converges to one with the square root and this converges to one, right? So now, if we go back to this inequality on top, we can now apply the limit arithmetic theorem because we, we have one over a convergent sequence which we know that converges to one. And since one is non-zero and every element of the sequence is non-zero, then the limit of this sequence is one over the limit of the sequence in the denominator, which is one. And the same story works here. So basically this sequence converges to one and this sequence converges to one and this inequality holds for every n. So by the sandwich theorem, we conclude that this limit is one. So that's, that was uh, quite a tricky limit, which uh, was uh, solved nicely with the sandwich theorem. So we can now visualize in Desmos this sandwich theorem, how the sequence BN is getting squeezed between the two sequences. So Desmos is actually very convenient. And so it allows you to use uh, uh, superscripts and uh, subscripts here. So you can write those formulas and then Desmos actually computes automatically uh, for every n, this sum, right? So it defines this uh, sequence uh, bn. And this is a way for us to create list, a list in Desmos. So I created a list with a thousand elements. And then we can define the sequence uh, bn, which would be to plot it. I just type the, the x coordinate would be n, and then the y coordinate would be bn. One would be the limit to which the sequence would be approaching. And then bn is bounded from below by the sequence an, which is uh, n times the n is the x coordinate, and then the y coordinate would be here n times the 
n times the smallest element in the sum. So it's bounded from below and then it's bounded above by the sequence cn, which is n times the maximum element. And so we see that the sequences approach one together and then the sequence bn is getting squeezed between an and cn, which both converge to the same limit one.